Good morning. It's Friday, August the 14th, and I'm Aya Wimala, and uh, it's Friday. It doesn't seem, the weekends don't make any difference anymore, do they? I guess to some people they do, but to a lot of us, it's another day. Uh, we have a, we're having a really hot one today, but it's sunny and bright, and uh, it, it looks like it's going to be a, a wonderful day. And tonight there's a vigil. This is going to be my first big outing in a group of people, and I'm really planning to stay safe and um, wear my mask and speak through my mask. Hopefully there'll be a microphone. I'll just be leading a short meditation, and um, other people will speak. But it's at the Woodstock Square tonight at 8.30 hour time, and it's just a vigil, so a peace vigil, and I, I have a lot of, uh, I, I sincerely think it will remain peaceful. I don't think there's any, any reason it would not be peaceful, but it's going to be to encourage our county board to uh, seriously reconsider their contact track with ICE and using our county jail right in Woodstock where the temple, where our temple is, um, using the county jail as, as a, a pretty big detainee center. So it will, it's more, I don't think that's going to happen with the board. I, I the signs are that, that it probably will, they will continue that contract, but um, it's good for people to know about the about people being detained and it's good for people to have to to be more aware of what's going on in their local communities and um, think about how we want this the future of our country the direction we want to go in so i'm happy to to be there so today i want to start with my wish and if you've been watching me, you know I've also been reading occasionally uh, the St. Francis prayer. It's often called the, Saint, the Peace Prayer of St. Francis. And I was reading about Francis because I was thinking how similar it is to my wish. So my wish is part of a book called uh, The Path of the Bodhisattva that was written in the 8th century by a Buddhist monk in India, Shanti Dewa. And St. Francis lived in the 12th century, and, the, and he, he died at 41, I think, in 11, 1126. And uh, I realized he had never become a priest. He never was a priest. And he, he didn't want to be a priest. He wanted to just be a teacher. <coughs> Excuse me. And his teaching, he, he had kind of a wild and crazy body life and he, he, a little bit like maybe the Buddha when he was younger because he came from a family of privilege. And, um, and then his life changed and he began to uh, talk and to kind of uh, very quickly changed his ways, but he was never a monastic. But he now is, he did become a saint, and he's now the saint of business and animals and ecology. So I think in this area, that's very important. You know, we've kind of uh, been sidetracked, side or maybe not sidetracked, but the pandemic has put our focus on other issues in our country. So I think St. Francis is the patron saint of ecology. And so that includes the earth and the plants and the animals and it's it's everything that we need to focus on to keep to keep living on this planet. So very appropriately. He's he's more than just that person with all the animals on his arms and shoulders, you know, he's he represents a lot more. So the two the two the teachings of the two, the 8th century Buddhist monk and the, and the 12th century uh, Catholic preacher. 
are so similar. I just, I just keep marveling at those two, the peace prayer and my wish and all of the teachings of, in the way of the Bodhisattva. So they're so similar. I think it's getting things down to the essence of what they, of what they are. And a lot of the debate and argument and discussion and my viewpoints better than your viewpoint just become unnecessary when we really look at the at the basics so that's always good to see so let's do my wish and then we can sit and then I want you to go and have a beautiful day and bring some joy into your life and possibly the life of someone else today may I become at all times now and forever a protector for those without protection, <clears throat> a guide for those who have lost their way, a ship for those with an ocean to cross, a sanctuary for those in danger, a lamp for those without light, a place of refuge for those without shelter, and a servant to all in need. By means of this meritorious deed, may I never join with the unwise, only the wise, until the time I attain Nibbana. So why don't we sit? And we'll do a lot of sitting. We're not doing a lot. We have about 15 minutes to sit. And we can sit in silence. I think everybody can just uh, repeat the phrases to themselves. Keep coming back to your breath and remember that when you become distracted, don't be discouraged because it's in that distraction that we become aware that we're distracted. So most of the time we could spend a lifetime and never realize that most of what we're doing is following our monkey mind that we're not making the decisions, we're just following the strongest uh, sensation. Our thoughts are following after everything they're picking up from us, from our body, from our sense doors, and then, and then they're following after the strongest impulse, the strongest sense that gets through. So we can spend an entire lifetime just living that way. From, from, our thoughts taking us from one impulse to another uh, without developing insight and wisdom that comes from that taming of our minds and becoming comfortable knowing who we are and becoming a wise person, becoming a person of wise thinking but then also of wise action. So. Don't be afraid of silence. Don't be afraid of uh, knowing who you are. And we can see ourselves. And then we can know if there are places and parts of us that we want to tame a bit. Or maybe we want to arouse with energy and become a little bit more energetic. But uh, don't be afraid of, of being with yourself. And don't be afraid of knowing yourself really well because there's nothing there's <laughs> there's nothing bad about that nothing terrible and what you'll find is that we all have that buddha nature or christ the divine within us however we want to call it that it's already there so all we have to do is bring it out nurture it encourage it. So, gently close your eyes if you're in a place where you can do that. It is hot here. And just begin to observe your breath. Get be in the posture that allows you to uh, have a noble uplifting to your body. Well, even if you're on the floor or if you're standing up. Just feel yourself rise. Let your spine rise up. Let it support you. That's 
the best way for your body and it also allows you to breathe more easily and you'll be less less tired as you sit helps you stay awake so we breathe in and out through our nostrils we put our hand on our belly and as we observe our body breathing we can feel we can be physically aware that we're taking in that air the oxygen is getting down into our lungs all the way all the way down and it pushes on the diaphragm and we feel it in our belly and that's what we want to feel that we know we're really breathing in a healthy way and we are really calming ourselves down when we breathe like this We've been training our body since we began practicing together. This is the first piece of our first aid kit. Begin to breathe. Allow your body to breathe calmly just breathing not just up in the top of our lungs the top of our chest that's when we have uh, anger or fear or anxiety what we want to do is allow our body to take those deeper breaths we don't force it just watch your body and notice that over time we've all been, we've developed this deeper breathing. We're not hyperventilating, we're just allowing our lungs to take in more oxygen. You can observe your breath by through your hand on your belly. But we often observe our breath just around our nostrils and above our upper lip. That's when we talk about having that little butterfly be on the tip of your nose. And imagine you're that little butterfly very lightly observing your body breathing from that vantage point. We're observing very uh, subtle, very, very delicate uh, to the touch sensations. We may just feel that slight tickle in our nostrils. Just an awareness of the air passing through as we inhale. And again, as that carbon dioxide comes out, releasing it. We know if we're wearing our mask, we can really feel that exhale because we feel that warmer breath. And that's when we get, that's when we begin to get hot under those masks. Still not a reason to pull your mask down below your nose. That's the that's our 
the carbon dioxide that's going out and uh, contamination in the air is there when we do that. Keep relaxing your body. Be aware of your entire body. <clears throat> With your focus on your breath, we can have a, an awareness of our entire body. Being aware of our body breathing. Feel where you have tension and let it go. Relax, let that spine just support you. Even relax the muscles around your spine. Let your shoulders drop on the exhale. trying to control your mind. Don't repress your thoughts, just allow them to come and go without becoming distracted by them. See them rise and then they'll pass away. Just be aware of the rise and the fall of those thoughts, of your breath. As you relax on the exhale, feel the rising as you inhale and the relaxing as you exhale.
with the silence within. We're not retreating from the world. We're learning to find the silence within where we can always go to find wisdom and peace Now send metta to yourself, send thoughts of loving kindness to yourself. May I be well, may I feel safe, may I be content and open to joy and true happiness. May I live in peace. And then just begin to radiate that quality out First to your loved ones, then to all of the other people you know and the living beings who are supporting you through the pandemic, who are supporting you in your lives, who are supporting and trying to help the world. Send out loving kindness to your enemies that's the quality of goodwill. Loving kindness is really, uh, when we think about hate, the opposite of that can be is loving kindness. We don't have to love our enemies, but we don't hate them. So we practice goodwill. We want, we want good things for them the same way we want good things for ourselves and our loved ones. We want peace for our enemies. We want serenity. We want, we want the best things that life can hold based on conditions and causes. We want that for everyone, every being. So just allow yourself to radiate it out the further it goes and the more it goes towards that boundless quality, the more spacious we'll feel, you will feel, I will feel. It allows us to have that open heart, that open mind. Just that feeling of spaciousness is so much better than holding uh, conflicting qualities in our heart and in our mind. If we hold love and anger at the same time, they're battling at each other. So if we're holding that hatred for our enemies, no matter where they are, if we're holding that hatred, it's going to keep us bound. We are enslaved to it, so we can let it go. It's only hurting us. So today, let me read again my wish. And then, if you can, continue to sit. If not, 
bring joy into your life today and see if you can bring some joy into the life of others. May I become at all times, both now and forever, a protector for those without protection, a guide for those who have lost their way, a ship for those with an ocean to cross, a sanctuary for those in danger, a lamp for those without light, and a refuge for those who lack shelter, and a servant to all in need. By means of this meritorious deed, may I never join with the unwise, only the wise, until the time I attain Nibbana. Thank you so much for being with me. And I think I'll see you Sunday. There may be, there may be a conflict with uh, Upal Gamaj speaking at the temple, but maybe I can put out a notice about that. Okay, thank you.